Yo, yo, welcome to lesson 36. Today, we're going to learn how to do front-end development properly. And I mean it when I say properly. There's a lot of people that don't do this, and as a result, their code is very messy and hard to maintain. And that's why I want to teach you guys the correct way right from the start. So let me start off with a question. Based on the app that we have created, let's say we have to pass the items in the cart over to the shipping department so that they can process the order. How would you do this? So based on what we learned with DOM, we can use the document object to find the container list element, which should have the items inside the cart. And in this example, we got back three elements. And then when we try to get the text inside one of the elements, we're going to get something that looks like this. Apple dash two slash n delete. This looks terrible. And now we'll have to write some complicated logic just to parse the name and the price of the item. That code looks nasty. And we can avoid doing this by simply changing the way that we think. We need to stop thinking like an end user and rather start thinking like a programmer. And that's why I started to teach Python first. I wanted you guys to think like a programmer. When we first built this app in lesson 19, we didn't have any UI. And therefore, we used a list to store the cart, and we also used a class to store the data. This can be called the state of our application. And your goal when you build UI is to separate the data from the UI. And this can be achieved very easily by making the UI mirror the state of the application. What I mean by this is if the cart has three items, the UI should reflect this and only display three items. And we can relate this back to video games, where basically the UI is constantly updating as you press a key in the game. For example, when you take damage, your HP will decrease. Then the UI will refresh, and then it will show you your updated HP. So in a sense, when the state of the app is updated, the UI should refresh to show the changes. And that's basically all we have to do to improve our application. So the first thing we have to do is add a cart. So let's do let cart equals empty list and close it with a semicolon and then hit enter. Next, let's create a class called item. And for the constructor, it takes two parameters, a name and a price. And this will represent each item inside our cart. Next, create a function called refresh UI. And this function will draw the UI based on the total price and whatever is inside the cart. Now go to add item. And let's move all the code that's related to creating UI elements. So let's copy this, delete it, and paste it inside the refresh UI function. Then for the add item function, all we want to do is create a new item based on the item name and the item price. And then we want to add this item to our cart. And finally, we want to call refresh UI because the state of our application has changed. Now let's go to refresh UI. All we want to do is just draw the application based on the state. We don't have to make any changes to this line because there's only one instance of total price and we're only updating the text inside the total price. However, it's a different story for the list items. Now we need to render each item inside the cart. We can do this simply by writing a for each loop. So let's copy the cart, paste it here and do dot for each and then open the parenthesis. And inside here, let's write a function using the shorthand method. So open the parenthesis and in here, we need to take one parameter. So let's call it item. Now add an equal sign and an arrow key, and then open this Google brackets. And now hit enter. Now anything inside this Google brackets is the body of the function. So now let's copy everything inside here, and then remove it, and then paste it inside the body. And now all we have to do is just use this item parameter to access each item inside the cart. So instead of item name, we're going to use the name and the price from the item object. So let's replace this with item.name, and this one with item.price. And now let's scroll down. And now for the click event on the delete button, instead of removing the element, we should remove the item from the cart. So we can do cart.pop and then we open the parentheses and here we have to provide it the index of the item. And we can get the index very easily. So let's scroll up. And for the for each loop, all we have to do is add an extra parameter to the list. So add a comma and type index. So basically the second parameter for a for each function is the index of the item. So let's scroll down and now let's put index here in the pop. And here we don't need to do parse in anymore. The reason for this is because when we created this object, we already converted the price to an integer. So basically we can get rid of parse in here and remove the parentheses. And now all we have to do is get the price from the item. So let's remove this and put item.price. And cool, everything looks good. So now let's click run and see if it works. So let's add an apple for $1. And now let's add a banana for $2. Wait, that looks weird. We have two apples and one banana. Something's not adding up. Do you want to take a guess of why this is happening? Well, the reason is very simple. So first we added one apple to our cart. Then we called render UI. So it drew one apple on the screen. 
Next, we added a banana to our cart. And then we call refresh UI to draw each item inside the cart. So now we drew another apple and then finally the banana. So that's why we got an apple, apple, and then a banana. So to fix this, all we have to do is clear the UI and then add each item into the list. So to clear the UI, all we have to do is clear the parent list item, which holds all of the list items. So let's copy this, paste it here, and do dot inner HTML equals empty string. And then end it with a semicolon and hit enter. So this basically just clears out the items inside the list. So now let's click run. And now let's add an apple, $1, banana, $2. And click add item. And that looks perfect. Add a strawberry for $3 and click add item. And now let's delete the banana. Nothing happened, but the total price is decreasing. So let's take a look at our code. And I'm guessing the problem is somewhere in here. After we removed the item, we decremented the price and then we updated the text but we didn't tell the UI to refresh. So basically we can just add refresh UI here and we can also delete line 34 because inside refresh UI, we already update the text here. So let's get rid of this line and let's click run. Whoops, my bad guys. I was thinking in Python, but in JavaScript to remove an item, we have to use the splice function, which takes an index and we pass one here because we want to remove one item from the list. So now we can remove the banana, the apple and the strawberry. Cool, so basically by keeping track of the state, we basically have access to the list of items inside the cart. So now we can put console.log cart here. Each time we add an item, we'll be able to see the cart of items and we can do cool stuff like filtering. And we can also show the total number of items inside our cart without doing too much work. So now we can click run and here I can add an item and here we get total number of items and we can add another item. And now we have two items. And we basically got this for free without doing any extra work. So in conclusion, the UI should mirror the data such that when the data is updated, the UI should be refreshed such that it matches the data. And a great way to remember this concept is to remember that the UI should stay stupid and all it should do is mirror the data. And if you understand this concept, it will make learning React very easy in the future. Anyways, thanks for watching. I hope you learned something new. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next lesson.